The Caboodle SMP, or KSMP for short, was a lore-based Minecraft SMP that's been well regarded within the Minecraft lore and roleplay space for some time. And as of early August this year, this SMP came to an end having told over two years worth of phenomenal stories. And for those that don't know too much about KSMP, here's a little rundown. There's three factions, the Overworld, the Nether, and the End. Each faction has their own characteristic trait to perform certain actions such as the Netherians having fire protection and the Endherians having the ability to teleport. Caboodle, or just Caboodle for those who don't know, made this SMP to tell some pretty cool stories. And if you do want to watch or catch up with the lore, you can head on over to the Caboodle SMP YouTube channel to watch all the bots back. There's a total of three seasons, with a few spin-off episodes in between just, just to keep things interesting. Don't want to keep the Yanks going on too long. Hi, it's me, Maystick. How's it going? Now, what was the point of me mentioning all that? Well, this is a tribute to the SMP from me. And by this, what I want to do is redesign the weapons and tools that the cast members use, as well as make some original designs. Now, quick disclaimer, these weapons and tools will not be accurate. And I'm only doing the tools and weapons from the cast of Season 3. However, if you want to see previous cast members have a weapon redesign or a completely original design, let me know in the comments. Now because I just survived 100 days in hardcore Minecraft using Tinker's Construct, which you should totally go watch if you haven't already, I'm gonna start by making the members weapons with this mod. Oh, also this video will have two and a half to three parts. I say two and a half cause the second part is kind of a mix. You'll see what I mean later on, trust me. Some of these are gonna be tough. All right, let's start with everyone's favorite blue bunny, Caboodle. As far as I'm aware, Cabin only used a vanilla sword throughout the whole of the SMP. So that's what I'm going to make, but with a few alterations. This is Dingus after all. It's raining, it's thundering, and I've just noticed there's a block missing over there. Stop. Stop. So this was, I believe... Cool. Eevee Shweebee the night away. Nice. All right, now that crisis has been averted, let's get to making some weapons now, shall we? First is Cab's weapon. Cab, from memory, had a, like a diamond sword or something. First of all, a regular sword has three parts. I will give her a cobalt blade head, a slime steel tool handle, as well as a heptazen tool handle. Because, well first of all, if you haven't watched the Tinga's Explained Materials video yet, just go and watch that because that gives some insight on what we're talking about. But this one here makes the blade, it swings faster. This will give us a secondary health bar with Regener re regeneration onto the health bar and this will also keep the speed going as well as as long as you know you keep swinging with it so go ahead and make that real quick i could just make this and call it quits there but no i'm going to add some special effects like modifiers and upgrades because i want this sword i want all these tools to be the best they can within tinkers when you apply modifiers and abilities onto your weapon it'll not only change the way the blade and the way your weapon actually functions in the game but also give it some textures and mod modifications on the actual model itself if we go grab this book here for example this is basically your your bible for tinkers construct pretty much go into here going to melee harvest we got all these materials here right and what i want to add i want to also i want to get i want to now go into upgrades and upgrade because because for those who don't know at the end of season three cab becomes a hybrid of the three realms overworld and another realm right so i want to make her weapon be something in between all three first of all, before we do anything actually before we do anything with these things right we go to bonus these slots upgrades will give us one of these so if we just keep going that gives us one like upgrade i'll go ahead and grab one of those slap it on and then i'll come back to doing the weapon itself and just to save time for like every other weapon i make i'll be also doing that and applying these slots upgrades to all the other weapons as well so we can save time so now we'll just go ahead and give the sword what i think it needs some upgrades so we want, we want fiery give it that another like effect next we want probably severing that'd be a cool one abilities it's the one that gives us like a teleporting like thing. Okay, that kind of works. So now we should be able to go like that. Yeah, there we go. All right, cool. So now, because she's from the overworld, we definitely haven't done anything for the overworld yet. Let's add, should we give it diamond? Does that work? Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. Diamond tipped. 
That is very cool. All right, I want to say this is done. That'll be Cab's blade done. Next is Maddie. She's from the end of fashion, and I believe from memory, Maddie used a mix of a bow and some daggers. But for the sake of consistency, I'm going to make Maddie one weapon, and that'll be the bow. Okay, on to Maddie, and I know I said in the voiceover that I'm going to make her a bow. The only thing is, within Tinkers, you can't make a typical vanilla style bow, either a crossbow or a longbow. So, let's make a longbow. As of season three, for those that, for those that don't know, Maddie isn't technically an Endearian anymore as she gave up her Endearian characteristic to give to Cab for being a hybrid. But for the for the fact that she was a Endearian from the very beginning, let's make her an Endearian based bow. I want to grab her this bowstring to suit like color schemes per se. Let's give her two Manulan bow part bow limbs. And for the bow grip, we're gonna go with let's go with a Queen's slime bow grip. The green on this kind of actually matches her entire aesthetic. Applying the green to the like middle of the bow grip actually kind of makes sense. So I'm kind of glad I actually decided to do that. And also, um, let me just, uh, for example, uh, see so yeah, a chicken over there. If I just, um, that. Never mind. I don't even need to worry about aiming at a mob and killing it. I can just teleport with the bow. That's really cool. I actually just learned. I, I, okay, I knew I did the video in regards to learning the materials and whatnot, but I'm still learning like the actual core mechanics of certain parts in within Tinkers. So I didn't know I could do that. Anyway, with abilities and modifiers wise, we want to add true shots. Uh, next we need what's scope? And largest distance objects as the bow draws back ends up a bit less than a spyglass when fully drawn. Oh, so you can zoom in with it. That's kind of cool. Okay, so we would want this as well. Next, we want Pierce, right? Yeah. Basically, I want to I make Maddie the the bow that is like that is befitting of a leader, pretty much. Crystal shot, multi shot. Ooh, that does work. Okay, it's also a good thing I'm actually looking through these modifiers and, and abilities because it also makes me recap on certain things I wasn't either aware of or refresh my memory on certain things I did know but just didn't remember at the, very, at the time being. One more thing I want to add, I want to add is probably going to be let's go with freezing, shall we? Because of you know Maddie being from the end realm, the void. The void is like kind of like space, meaning it's very cold. So adding the freezing modifier makes sense. So we now have Maddie's longbow, and I know I said it was going to be a bow. Maddie, you've been given a longbow. Hope you enjoy that. Now put this alongside Cab's sword. And to finish off the dynamic trio that started it all, I'll be making Ray's next, who is from the Nether. Ray used a scythe throughout the whole SMP, so let's go ahead and make it. It's time for a scythe. A scythe requires this stuff, so let's go ahead and look, have a look, see at what we want. Okay, and when it comes to weapons again, when it comes to these tools and weapons, I want, I'm trying to make it so it one suits the character two suits like color scheme as well and three gives it gives the the correct like characteristic traits that would suit said person if that makes sense so ray's case you know being from the nether and is a a winged uh netherian and because netherians when they're when, they, when they're on fire they have fire protection meaning they take no fire damage and i believe this one here makes it so we can't have you can when you're on fire you do more damage let me have a look at that real quick so, yeah so when on fire so we we'll want to grab this we need a tool binding as well we'll give it a scorched stone tool binding if that exists where's scorch there it is there scorched stone okay cool we'll give this one we'll give it this speed is key we want we want ray to be able to go smack smack every with her scythe right so bang 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 Oh, pfft. it's a tool handle, not a tough tool handle. God freaking damn it, I can read. That actually looks really cool. <laughs> what? Holy smokes. This actually looks really freaking cool. I like this a lot. So, what the looks at upgrades? We want melee fiery. Netherite. That's also another thing we want to add. Uh, abilities. Parrying seems, something, seems like something that, that I think Ray could have on her thing. It's a dagger thing, never mind. God damn it. Ooh, sharpness. Yo, I sharpness. There we go. And look at that. It adds a nice, a nice white underlying to the blade, giving it, you know, that nice sharpness looking like where the, where the blade will actually, you know, slice. If you couldn't tell, I like weapon design. <laughs> maybe, maybe a couple more things and then we'll be done with Ray's weapon. Let's look at abilities again. Uh, blocking. Can blocking be done? 
That looks cool. Okay, this this view doesn't do it justice, but this looks cool. Okay, that's very cool. Yeah, I like that. All right, I'm gonna call that raise weapon done. I don't really have an exact order for the characters. I'm just kind of doing duos and trios. Now I'll be on to everyone's favorite waste walker, Jack Pyrocythe. Now Pyro had these war glaive arm blade things. I don't know, man. The thing is, Tingus doesn't have a weapon for what Pyro uses. However, he uses blade-based weapons. So, I'm gonna make them a cleaver. Righty-o, next is Pyrocyte. Let's make him a cleaver. Now, the thing with Tinkers, there is a modifier or upgrade. Aha, dual, dual wielding. There we go. Allows the tool to be used from both the main and offhand tools with dual. Tuna tools must first receive offhanded in order to receive dual wield. Ooh, okay, how do I do that? General. Offhanded, there we go. Okay, cool. You know what? First of all, let's actually make the dem cleaver. Okay, so because Pyro is Netherian, it makes sense to, again, keep the blazing bone thing going. We need a large plate. And for that, I'm going to go this. And because he's a waste walker, it would make sense to give also a necrotic bone tough handle, but also a cobalt. Let's go ahead and make the damn cleaver. So bap, 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 bap. Oh, that looks cool. That looks cool. This looks very, very cool. It's really nice to see just how like the tool parts come together to make such a really cool texture. Like that's just really cool. Oh, the, the Tinker's devs have outdone themselves with this mod. Now, for offhand, we need leather, fire charge, and iron core ball. Easy. Now, we want to add dual wielding. And now, if we just do that, we should be able to. Oh, that's cool. Now, we can actually feel like we're, you know, using Pyro's weapon, like he would typically be doing if he was utilizing both of his war glaives that he has in the SMP. For now, we're gonna remove one because we're still working on the actual blade itself. But also let's add fire because Netherian. I also want to add, I'll add smite, uh, oh, there it is. That's like a little, I like a little like flower thing to the side there. I say the flower, but that, it's just a, just a whole ass melon on the side. Let's make the weapon a bit faster. We're going to add swift strike. Oh yes, we wanna make it netherite. And also, Soulbound. And I think that'll do for Pyro's weapon. Now, we can't have Pyro and not have the person introduced alongside them from the beginning. Next, everyone's favorite, deadliest Minecraft player. <laughs> Clown Pierce. And just like Ray, Clant also has a scythe. So let's make Clant a scythe befitting of lethality. It go on dork. Got a shriek for Clown's weapon. We're making another scythe, but I'm gonna be making it a little bit different to how raised raises done because we learned that i believe clown isn't actually from the nether but he was introduced as a netherian clown isn't actually a netherian he's a off-worlder meaning he's got an, he's from a, an alternative universe that's entirely out of the caboodle smp universe let's make a scythe befitting of the clown pierce of of the of the deadliest minecraft <laughs> Oh my god. You know what, let's give him... Wait, okay, hold up. Can I make a Nawatl thing? I can't. Okay, so we'll grab that and we'll make it this because I want him to be able to go swing, swing, swing with it, you know, like fast. And then to make it with the handle wise, we'll want to give it this. All right, let me just go here. Bang, bang. Mm, that looks better. Yeah, I prefer that. Let's give it all of the lethality based like modifiers and upgrades because obviously a scythe made for the deadliest Minecraft. <laughs> God, that joke is never going to get old. <laughs> Let's have a look see. Upgrades. We want fiery and freezing. I think that'd be a really wacky combo actually. We do fiery damage while also fr slowing the enemy down. We also would like to do a bit of severing. Can severing be done here? Now, let's, just, let's do a bit of abilities now, shall we? Again, this is befitting of both a deadly Minecrafter as well as a, a, like the, probably one of the best PvPers within the Minecraft PvP community. I'm not too sure if he's the best. He's one of the best, I don't know for a fact. And because, this is a lore thing because it's Clown Pierce, he's able to create portals out of like thin air, I guess. I'm not sure how he does it. I remember seeing at one point in, in stage, he was able to just create a portal out of thin air. So we're going to give the scythe the warping effect. 
Uh, I've got now three upgrades left to go for. Let's make it so he can do some sharpness. We also want um, Swift Strike. And one more for, th for something else. Let's add one more effect. Pierce. Because, you know, his name's... His, his name's Clown Pierce? So, gotta add, gotta add the Pierce, right? Gotta add the piercing effect. And there we go. That is Clown Pierce's scythe, befitting of a deadly assassin or Minecraft player. I'm not looking at all these effects. That's a, that's a, a wild amount of effects. Like, we can just do... Oh. Oh, I've just realized something. We can't warp. Reason being is because we have the blocking effect. Whoops. Can we can we remove that? Is that a thing we can do? Oh my goodness. There we go, I fixed it. Okay, I learned something today. That is clown's weapon done. Okay, I said I didn't have a particular order before, but I kinda somewhat do. Cause now we have some end fashion folks next. Linku! Link from memory uses a long sword. So it's sword time. Linku time. We are making him a sword. And because he's Endyrian, we gotta make it suit the color scheme by also giving it some Endyrian like characteristics and a bunch of other cool stuff. But for now, let's grab the materials we need. What's Chorus doing again? Prince target from being teleported for. Ooh, maybe actually. So we're gonna get that. Uh, blade wise, we're gonna go for. We'll go for this one. And then for the second tool handle, I'm thinking either rose gold or amethyst bronze. Let's have a gander. Hmm. 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 But I like the look of that one. No, we're going with that. We're going with that. Here is Link's sword. Okay, it's not really a long sword because I know I, I'm looking back at my notes and I said long sword. And a long sword technically it also is this thing here, which it's fine. No, we won't do that. We want to make this now have the warping effect. Warping. Cool. Now we can just go. Zroop. Well, now we need to go back here, upgrades. And again, being. And Enderian freezing because of the void. We got sharpness. What else do we want? Diamond. Ooh, overforced. Yeah, let's do that. Now this looks more like an actual like a, a, a proper Enderian like sword. Cooling grants plus one point six damage per level against mobs immune to fire. Huh? That's interesting. That looks kind of cool. Okay, I know I can remove it, but I want to see what this looks like real quick, as like a model wise. Mmm, maybe. Now, actually, you know what? That makes it. No, I'm. Uh, yeah, you know what? No, I'm keeping it because thinking of it character and lore wise, again, Link being from the Void as an Endyrian, the Void being literally a, a freezing cold abyss because it's literally space. Having the ability to nullify or ignore the fire-like protection that mobs have when it, when they're immune to fire damage, having this makes it so it kind of sits well with the lore wise, so you can actually go ahead and go, you know, bat through uh, mobs that or enemies that are fireproof. So this works. I think that'll leave Link's sword there. Kyle F. Probably one of my favorite characters thus far at this point. I loved how Kyle played his character from start to end, and in my opinion, all throughout season three, anytime he would interact with anyone, specifically Cab, I would just lose it and bull my eyes out laughing. Anyway, I'm making him a sword as he had one. And considering Kyle was Cab's brother in the story of KSMP, and Cab also had a sword, siblings with somewhat matching weapons. Yeah! All right, time for Mr. Kyle F. I'm making him a sword as well. Kyle, even though he was affected by the void, which will uh, actually up uh, will play a small part into making this weapon. All right, so we'll make him a Nawatl blade sword with some slime steel and some cores. Having this making it so he will nullify any Enderian teleportation effects or any teleportation in general. Again, because Kyle was affected by the void, we are going to add the warping effect to his blade. Wait, huh? Requires a gen- Oh, it requires diamond. Yeah, that was cool. I'm looking at it now. Looking at it texture-wise, it looks pretty cool. You know what, because this is because this is very much more like a sibling dynamics thing, I will give the sword both freezing and fiery. 
This is looking like a sword from hell. <laughs> That's kind of cool, actually. What would our quartz... No, we would... Wait, actually... Hmm... Do we want sharpness? Yeah, we'll add sharpness because I'm remembering a thing from Lore, from the some of the cinematics, um, that he kind of, like, you know, stabbed Caboodle, I think, in, like, the end of Season 2, I think it was. Let's add some reinforcement to it. This has warping, fiery, freezing, sharpness, interference. I think that's it. Necrotic. Ooh, you know what? We'll add necrotic. And that's actually, that's actually, you know what? That's actually a pretty good time to stop there because of the fact that we just ran out of upgrade slots. So that is now Kyle's sword done. Next on my list is Kanja. Okay, so for those that don't know, Kanja has a trident. I can't do that in Tinker, sadly. So I'm gonna make him a scythe. In my opinion, a scythe is probably the only thing closest to a trident. Hello, dragon. All right, so like I said in the voiceover for Kancha, can't make him a trident because Tinkers doesn't actually allow for a trident as we as we you know draw through. Da, 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 da. No tridents available. There are staffs, but I don't actually know how to use those yet. So we're making him a scythe, and the scythe we're gonna make him because again he's and he's well okay. See the funny thing is Kancha's a hybrid, so we'll make it so the blade is maybe queen slime. Hmm, maybe. Do we have Queen Slime like tool binding? Because if so, I will use that. And for the blade, we'll use we we'll use Hepatizen. And next we need two uh tough tool rods. So I'm going to make one be chorus. You know, I'll make i have I'll give it this actually in the waddle. Got a shriek. Moon out. Again, because all Ender folks, you know, Enderian, we gotta give it the warping effect. And as also we also want to add that's not I, uh, we we'll also add sharpness. Oh, we want diamond. Hmm. Hmm. See, I like this. I like this, but this is also getting me to me as well. Hmm. Maybe, maybe. Yep, go for it. Upgrades. We'll go in. We're we'll going with overforced. Okay, I know it's a scythe, so I gotta like not think about this. Because <laughs> every time I think about a scythe, I always think about, oh, you know, just put the severing on it. That makes sense, right? No, because Kanch's weapon is meant to be a trident, not a scythe. We gotta think of it like a trident. I'm leaving it like this. This looks cool. This looks menacing enough to be in the hands in, in the hands. This looks menacing to be in the hands of a hybrid. What is he? A raccoon? He's a raccoon, right? He's a raccoon in a suit. Yeah. This looks menacing enough to be in the, in the hands of a, of a, of a of an Indian raccoon about the size of this table. I'm sorry, Country, your your character looks really small in the series, so apologies on that. That is Country's weapon done. Oh yeah, that's right. Maddie has assisted with Tinker SMP. Here's Artemis's weapon. I'm making her some daggers. Pretty sure Maddie actually gave Artemis her daggers. Can't actually recall. Okay, Artemis, you have some daggers. The daggers are pretty easy to make because they just require this. Pretty simple. I'm thinking of Nawatl, but also potentially, yeah, this. It's a tough handle. Oh my goodness. All right, that and this. There we go. Okay, we have Artemis's weapons here. I never made daggers in continuous constructs, so this is gonna be quite strange. Uh, oh great, nope, not that. Abilities, we could do this. No, this, parrying. Allows using the tool as a shield briefly after attacking. Let's do this. Wait, this is an ability, right? Will that stop it from... Okay, you know what? Apply, I'll, I'll apply warping real quick. Yep, okay, cool. And then... Shoot. Okay, so you can't you can't have them stacked together to warp. All right, noted. Also, I've got a shriep. Got a shriep. Man, I cannot, like, not stop saying that after B-Dub started saying it now. My god. I blame B-Dubs for making me stay Shreep instead of sleep now. Like, Shreep is now just in my vocabulary. Rent free in my brain. Parrying. Alright. Do you... What? Oh, because it's only for a short duration of time, that's why. Yeah, the parry and okay, shield briefly after attacking. Okay, that worked. And now we're out of abilities. That doesn't matter. We just need to apply a bunch of other stuff, like freezing. And... We're going to sharpness and pierce, because that makes sense. We have warping, we have parrying, we have sharpness, we have piercing. Is there a way to throw the daggers? That'd be kind of cool. Daggers are a light weapon capable of quick strikes from either hand.
Okay, well, the dual wielding doesn't actually, you know, do much. Because I can't really do that with, without right clicking to warp. So that kind of, you know, makes that entirely useless. That might actually be all I can do. Oh, actually, I can add this to it. And it's gone blue. Any other? Oh, yeah, uh, let's go reinforce as well. It adds like a tiny little pixel on the end there. <laughs> you can just see it. Out. That's so minuscule. Yeah, I'm going to leave it there for Artemis. And of course, we can't forget the newest members of the Nether Faction. Ah, the story painter, aka Joshua, or just Josh. When I first saw Josh's character, I was in awe. He built and wrote his character very well, which makes him my favorite, actually. Well, hello. Well, that, and also the fact that Josh had a Warhammer for his weapon. And for those that don't know, I love Warhammers, or any hammer-based weapon in general. So I'm making him a sledgehammer. Time to actually have some fun now. We have Joshua making him a sledgehammer. I could have made him either, like, this thing in particular, or I could have made him this thing. But because in, like, Joshua's, um weapon model, it's, a, it's like a double-faced hammer, if that makes sense, which is basically what this thing is. Let's do that, shall we? So I'm going to give him two Blazing Bone Lads. We want to make it so he can do more damage while being on fire. Some necrotic damage. And this half tool handle will give it so it does momentum. We want momentum. Bap, 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 bap. That already looks pretty cool. This already looks pretty freaking cool. Not done yet. Now, let me get my Bible out because I believe there was some like abilities I want to add. Hmm. Huh. <laughs> we want to add Fiery because, again, Nadirian here. Yeah, that looks cool. Look at that. That's pretty freaking sweet. Upgrades we want. That's right. We want to add uh, Raymond and Netherite. Also, excuse me I if I sound like I'm yawning and tired because I kind of am... Oh, that removes the texture though. Oh, that's stinky, isn't it? I'm not a fan. Anyway, that looks dull and gross. I mean, it looks kind of cool, but it removes the texture on the top and the bottom of the hammerhead. Oh yes, reinforced. Sharpness, what do you do actually? I'm, I'm very curious. Yeah, we did that. Do some sharpness. We can add some funky stuff. Haste, ooh. Yeah, that looks all right. Doesn't it? Oh, whoa, I just realized the, um, hold on, let's go for camera. The sharpness is added, oh wow, oh. That is some bolts of the weapon. That's actually kind of cool. Also, that rail on the, on the handle there, that looks sick. But, uh, I think that's Josh's weapon done, actually. I can't really think of what else to add. This is by far the best uh, weapon. I, I Not best, actually. Uh, what's my favorite weapon so far? It's got to be clown pieces, actually. I like clown pieces weapons a lot, actually. It's tough. It's because it's between... Okay, my favorite weapons so far are Josh's, clowns, and cabs. Those are my three so far that I've made. Kyle's also really cool. Oh my god, they're all cool actually. They're all really cool. Uh, but anyway, but that is the story painter, aka Josh's weapon done. Next is Sushi. Oh, a waste walker risen from the dead. He carried a long sword or a claymore? I couldn't actually say for sure. Either way, it was a big sword, so I made him a cleaver. Time to make a cleaver for the scuffed Sushi Man. Because Sushi is also a waste walker just like... Yeah, Pyrocytes was, but he's like a pa he's like a patchwork human kind of person, isn't he? So, you know what? Let's make a patchwork looking sword. So, we're going to do this because it's got like a like a yellow uh, blade to it. Necrotic. We're going to necrotic. Uh, we'll go a Nawaddle Tough Tool and... Wait, no, hold up. Heptazin. And then we'll go an, a uh, necrotic, making it a literal patchwork sword. Ooh... I like the black hilt, but I like the bone sticking out there. Bevel time. No, we don't have fiery. I mean, we do have fiery, but not fiery in the way that will make it, you know, do more fiery damage. We want diamond into netherite. Quartz. And then we want to add blocking for the fact that it's a massive ass sword. So we want blocking that. There we go. And blah. Look at that. I basically kind of sped around with Sushi's one because I kind of knew in my head what I wanted to do. Sweeping edge, that's what we want. Spider eye, maybe? Okay, what's it actually look like on the sword? Oh, okay. You know what? No, that's cool. I like that. If that's not like a patchwork sword, I don't know what is. But yeah, that is Scarf Sushi's sword. His cleaver, his claymore, that thing. I know words. Now, to make them an even trio, we have Nyrox. Making three Waste Walkers within the KSMP lore. I noticed Nyrox used and dual wielded two sickles, very much like Death from Puss in Boots, Last Wish. Hmm. Again, Tingus doesn't have this, but I found something that can work. I'm gonna make Nyrox a pair of Karmas. 
okay we have nairox or noki noki don't know how to pronounce her name her name is very like her, so, okay so nairox has like two different names we have nairox we have noki or noki i'm gonna go noki noki sounds right for the sake of consistency calling her nairox nairox you my friend are getting a pair of karmas meaning i need to add dual wielding onto the things but before we do that let's actually go ahead and figure out we need to make these damn things uh oh Okay, let's give her a... See, the thing is, with Nairox's weapons in, like, KSP lore, she has some sickles. Think of death from Puss in Boots. Think of his sickles, but think of it in, like, a more Minecrafty aspect. That is essentially what Nairox has done for her weapons, I believe. So, yeah. Also, why is it raining? Is it night time? Is, is it storming? I'm not even sure. Be gone. Because Nairox is also technically Nazarian, it would make sense to add this. It makes sense to add that. So yeah, I'm, I'm doing that. And then I'm going to add a necrotic tool binding. And then the wattle tool handle. You know what? No, that's easy done. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Look at that. Ooh, that looks kind of cool. Okay, it's not as big as I thought it was going to be actually now I think about it. But it does look pretty cool so far. That is what we have for Nairox's weapons. But imagine two of these. Look at that. Oh, that, that looks cool. Oh, speed run this nonsense. Look at that. Okay, that can be done like that. And then we do this. And then we do this. That looks cool now. Yep. All right, we want to add dual wielding to this damn thing. Oh, what? Really? I can't add dual wielding to the, to the karmas? Bro, what do you mean? What do you mean? Um, I'm not happy. Did I do it wrong? No, I didn't. I did. I do it. Hold up, wait. I didn't do it wrong, did I? That's it, right? Oh, it's menu. <laughs> Hear me out. This is look. Okay, okay. Look. Ready. Okay. 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 Look. Look. I have an. I have a reasoning why I thought they were the exact same. Look. Okay. I know you guys at home probably can see the difference. I can't. You know why? Because I am colorblind. These two look the. I looked at. I looked at this and I'm like, oh, that's colorball, right? No. No, it's not. It's Mignon. Mignon's freaking purple. <laughs> God freaking damn it. So I cannot do it into the damn thing. I just didn't read the freaking thing properly. I can't even, I can't even do this. Reinforced. Also, actually, give me, uh, we want that and we want this. That's nice. Put netherite. And we want this sucker here. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Oh, yeah, dude. It's very subtle on the thing. It already like, adds more onto the actual model itself. Like, it looks more menacing now than it did before. And if we go ahead and do this, and then we go ahead and do this. Bap, 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 bap. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's all coming together. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'll do for Nyrox's weapon. We're done here. Winter Weep, the man that takes W's or L's? A mystery that's yet to be solved. All jokes aside, Wynn's character used a crazy design weapon. It's a sword or a long sword? It's a big sword, but it has like a fin or some barbed point at the blade's tip. Anyway, looks really cool, but I'm making Wynn a cleaver. You know, for all those L's, I mean W's he's gonna take. <coughs> Moving on. <laughs> Just realized um, I am flying through these. I thought I'd be at this for a little bit longer than I currently am. All right, wind sweep time. Time for a cleaver. And it's going to be very similar wise to Joshua's uh, hammer in materials. I think it's actually very much similar to what I did for... This is what I was doing for sushi, but the opposite with the tool handles. Uh, maybe, maybe I do this. We have the heptazin part there on the back blade. We have the blazing bone part there. We have the necrotic bone part there. We have some more heptazin there. I also could do this because I want it to be also very much similar to Clown's Pierce's weapon in a way. Now we want blazing for fiery. Then we want to add some diamond news and another right. Quartz for some sharpness. Um, how very much similar is this to kind of similar now? Mm. That's an issue. Wait, can I add haste? Ooh. I can't. Ooh. Oh, I can. Yay. 
Yeah, we're doing that. Just because I want the like the red on the hilt here. That, look at that. We're going to add some reinforcement to wind's weapon as well. So with the red there, and we now have this thing here making this look like that. We have some netherite there. We have the sharpness there. We got, uh, we now have only two ability slots left. Blocking and dual wielding. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll add blocking and dual wielding. So now we're going to have this in our offhand, but also block with it. Even though we can't, you know, use it in fighting, we can at least block it as if it's a shield. That is Windsweep's weapon done and complete. Next, Swag of the Ash. Ash of the Swag. Ashwag. Yep, that was that was horrible. I'm gonna, just going to stop and go onto Ashwag now. <laughs> onto Ash's weapon now. <laughs> Does someone say Ashwag? Now, with Ash, he's very much a wild card within the KSMP. And from memory, I saw him have a gun at one stage, I think. So from that, I'm gonna make him a Lombo. Now, you all know him, you all love him. It is the wild card of the KSMP, Ashwag. I believe from recollection, Ashwag has a gun. I'm gonna give him, I did say longbow actually, didn't I? You, to be fair, a crossbow kind of also makes sense. I can feel a sneeze coming on, hold on, give me a second. Oh, you ever get like that, the, the feeling of a sneeze coming up and it just doesn't wanna come out? I've got that feeling right now, but I'm gonna make him a crossbow actually. This is new to me, what does a crossbow require? A limb, string, grip cool. Ashway is like a wild card, greedy. He's been stuck in the void. He's from an alternative universe. I'm gonna make sure to keep those three in, in the brain to give him what I want. So we're gonna make it have necrotic bone, bone limb, nawattle grip, slimy vine bowstring. Holy crap. That actually looks kind of cool. Wow. Okay. I genuinely don't even want to touch this because it looks so cool. Being a wild card, we want to add it, give it some wild card elements. Uh, we want to add multi shot and crystal shot as well. All right, let's load this up and see what happens. That's. Oh. That is. Holy crap, that was cool. Wait, I just did, I realized I, I never actually fired Maddie's bow. And it has the exact same stuff on it. Where am I going to land? Quick charge. Ooh, yes. Causes the crossbow to fire on attack instead of interact. Oh. It doesn't give it any textual difference. That's really kind of annoying, to be honest. I actually think that can, I can, that can be any, everything I can be. I, I think that'll be everything I can do for Ashwag's weapon. That'll be Ash's weapon done. And just to keep family dynamics to trios as well, introducing Ray's cousin, Katie. Katie used a gold sword from memory as her primary weapon. So I'll make that, but a bit more schmick. Okie dokie, first of all, sleep. Katie had a, uh, has a has a gold sword. And because there's not really a gold thing I can add to the sword, I'm gonna make it be at a blazing bone. I'm gonna give, give some queens that, that sounds like a fun idea. Uh, ooh, what, what looks better? I kind of like that. Yeah, that works. We're going to add diamond to the right, so if I can freaking type it correctly. Some quartz. I'm not going to add fiery this time around, but I am going to add some haste to it so it swings faster. This actually looks pretty good for a sword right now. I'm going to also add blocking. Next we want to probably add is necrotic. That's going to wrap up Katie's sword. I didn't know exactly what I wanted for her sword exactly. All I knew, all I knew and wanted it was to be like a gold-like sword with like some nether elements onto it. And that kind of is what I got there in the end. Just thought I'd give her a somewhat decently powerful sword with a few minor upgrades. It's just a gold sword, but a bit more schmick. Did someone say magic? Well, it's time for Cersei. And aside from Pyro who performed necromancy on their former wastewalkers, Cersei was knowledgeable within the arcane and potion brewing too, I think. Well, with Cersei's adept powers and skills, I'm making her a staff just to help control that magic, you know? Cersei, I'm making her a staff. The only issue is though, I don't know how staffs work in Tinker's construct just yet. Wait, do I just make a staff in like, in inventory space? I just, okay, I do. All right, cool. And because there's no actual technical customization per se, I just have to do what it does here. And because she's overworld, I'm making her this one. I would love to make her this one because it just looks really cool. But for the sake of, you know, sticking with lore based characteristics and whatnot, she's over, she's from the overworld, so it makes sense to make her this. So we're making her that. I don't really need to actually make it per se. I can just go here. Yoink. Cool. Well, that's, 
has a staff done. Again, the issue is I have no clue how staffs work. We're gonna grab this book here real quick. Staffs. Combining slime crystals and slime wood aids in creation of very flexible tools. How do you use it though is the question. Using the power of green slime, you can make the most defensive of magic staffs. Again, I have no clue how this works. So I'm going to go onto the wiki page and I'm gonna look it up because I have no clue how these damn things work. Wait a second. Hold, hold up. Wait, 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 wait. Stars, here we go. Stars are highly modifiable tools. While they lack any melee potential, they make it up. They make up for it with the with a wide range of abilities. This is gonna be a learning experience just for, for me as well right now. As far as I'm aware, these things are pretty versatile tools. They can be used for both harv like harvesting and attacking. As far as I'm aware, so I can use these crystals here to give the staff some stuff. Add this. All right, so now I can block with this. Can I add fire to this? No, I cannot. Okay, can I add this to it? I can add this to it. First of all, can I add diamond and then the right tier to this? I can. I can. I can do that too. Cool, all right. Quite a bit of defense, nice. What does it mean by defense slots? Okay, let me look up protection. Deck of all trades, increase the protection to all damage types. Projectile protection, melee protection, magic protection, fire protection. Increases your limits, increases the maximum percentage of, of, of protection from any source. Ooh, okay. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm learning these things. See, the thing is with staffs, right, there might be more to actually these tools that I'm actually not knowing about. When I first picked these up, I thought, okay, they're a magic weapon. Using crystals actually is kind of cool because it makes it more like a magic, it, it actually adds more like the magic, like wizardy, like characteristic to Tinkers, making it so you can actually make magic based weapons, even though you can't use magic spells per se. But in regards to a lore characteristic for Cersei, it makes sense to have all these that I've just applied to it. Cersei is, I think, an alchemist in lore, but she knows some stuff within the arcane and within all the protection I have on here currently, it makes sense for her to have them on there because she's learning from her mistakes and ways to actually be able to harness her arcane, her brewing, her alchemist like uh, traits into actually making her stronger. That's why I did that to the staff, even though I have no clue how staffs actually work within Tinkers yet. Then last, but certainly not least, we have Mu. Mu not only did some incredible stuff during their time on the SMP, but they played a, the role of a therapist at one stage. The one thing that blew me away was their talent for singing. Like when the end credits for the finale rolled, my jaw was on the freaking floor. <coughs> Hey Mace, you making the sledgehammer for Mu or nah? Oh right, uh, oh yeah, cause Mu had a warhammer as well. They're also getting the sledgehammer. Time for Mu. And because I was going to make Mu a sledgehammer, I'm gonna make it so it's a Nawatul large plate on one end, Hepzim plate on one on the other side. I think I might go with this actually. And for the handle, I'm going to make it a necrotic handle cause I think that works perfectly well. Yeah, that looks cool. I want to give it diamond. I also give it some sharpness as well. Ooh, yeah, knockback sounds funny. I'll make it reinforce. You know, I feel like, because towards the end, Mu kind of like goes down like a very, bit like a, you know, a hysterical breakdown, I think. I can't actually, I can't actually recall what Mu, the end of Mu's, like, lore is. Someone have to remind me in the comments. But I, I like to think that, like, uh, they go manic a bit, that they would light their hammer on fire and start causing some mass, like, arson and whatnot. I'm adding the fiery effect as a last touch to Mu's weapon. And with that, I'm gonna call it there with the weapons being done. That's, that's stage one done. The reason why I did all this, cr this wacky customization, right, I'm going to take this a step further and actually give all these weapons a custom model as well as some custom textures. Time to start with stage two. Let's hit it. Stage one down, time for stage two. Allow me to show you through a super fast epic time lapse. Wait, wait, hold on. Hold hey on, there, on, sorry on. to stop your viewing time right now. Future Mace here. Just wanted to take a quick moment of your time to say if you're enjoying what you're seeing right now, then consider subscribing and liking the video. It would be greatly appreciated. And you can always change your mind later on. All right, back to the video. Thanks. Bye. Is he done? Is he done the same as self promo? All right, cool. You know what time it is. It's time lapse time. Woo! And through a super fast epic time lapse, it is. So this is just me talking about the the process of me modeling, texturing, and what I did. And overall, it was a very fun product to work on. Uh, I had a lot of fun making my own designs 
with the weapons that were used within the Season 3 cast of Capital SMP. I do kind of wish I did spend a little bit more time refining and actually making the models a little bit more detailed and a bit, bit, a bit better, especially within the texturing phase, because um, there are some textures I'm not overly happy with the outcome, but there's always room for improvement later on in the future. As for the modeling, the modeling phase was probably the funnest part because it actually physically showed me like the blocking out basically of the models and how they would come together and form the forms I decided to make them in the end. And a few of the models I'm very happy with the outcome of, as you are obviously seeing, I'm very happy with the hammer based weapons to be honest because like I uh, said earlier, I enjoy hammer based weapons. So that was, that was really fun. And the reason why I've done what I've done with these weapons is because one, I wanted to stay true to, or, or start, try and stay true as possible to the models within the game itself, within Tinker's, the Tinker models. Two, I wanted to also alter the textures and models to be more befitting of a custom made original design for a weapon. And three, I guess, to just have fun and be creative because this is more what I'm wanting to do, uh, like, a, like a side thing, aside from just doing what I do with Minecraft. As soon as, as, soon as I figure out how to actually make models, texture them, and actually import them into the game, even though it's a bit technical and a bit difficult sometimes and I have to rip my hair out to try and do it, I do enjoy it. Alright, I will take you on to stage 2 part 2 or stage 3 now I guess, I'm not too sure what I'm actually calling the stage. Either way, on to the next stage, which is actually importing these weapons into the game itself, like I mentioned with the technical nonsense, and I'll let present day me take it away with talking about some like, of, the, of the more difficulties and whatnot that I can discuss further. Don't mind the bed, but remember earlier when I said this video would be two and a half to three parts long. Well, this is the other half of part two or part three? I don't know, I'll let you be the judge. Either way, this next part requires some technical know-how. So here are the weapons that I had made during that time frame before when I was tinkering around within Tinkers. And on the other side of the wall is where the magic happens. With a certain data pack, <coughs> custom roleplay data, <coughs> I'll be able to input all the weapons I made and have them right at my fingertips to display and showcase. So, early in the time lapse, I said there was a bit of technical nonsense that was driving me up the wall. This was a technical nonsense. So, if you don't know, within Blockbench, you're able to bring in your models into the game through resource packs with the custom roleplay data pack. There's a bit of technical know how, like I mentioned earlier, and it took me four hours to figure it out, but I got there in the end. So, as you can see, we have all the weapons lined up here. There are a few things I probably would like to have done and probably tried to learn before actually bringing these into the, the game per se because one thing for sure one thing for certain is, is these two. So this is Maddie's and this is Ash's uh, and because Maddie's is a bow right let's grab it real quick it, as you can see as you saw it was a netherite sword. Yeah um see I don't know how to make animated custom objects as of right now until i'm able to actually do that per se both ash and manny's weapons are just no the right swords i had a lot of fun with making these and aside from the issue of those two not being the correct weapons i had a lot of fun with, with actually importing these into the game aside from the you know hair ripping fun i had i, I the fun the fun is putting it lightly these weapons 
were very fun to make, even including making these ones on this side here. However, that is going to do it for my tribute to the Kabil SMP. I really do hope you enjoyed. I had a ton of fun making and creating these weapons and designing them. If there are any SMP groups that you would like to see have be done next, let me know in the comments. But before the video ends, I do want to give a quick little story on how I found and joined the community. I joined probably around the start or midpoint of season two. I can't actually remember as it was that long ago. But from that point on, KSMP actually inspired me to actually start writing character and world building. Literally to the point where I had a character headcanoned to be within the KSMP. And finally enough, season three applications had actually opened up when I went to see what the server was up to. I did apply. The only thing is though, pretty sure I sent my application a month later after the applications had actually closed. Didn't realize it until after I posted it actually. But this isn't about me. I just wanted to give something back to this SMP for all the incredible stuff the crew has done. So to both the cast and the behind the scenes team, thank you all for making this story as phenomenal and intriguing as you did. And thank you, Cab for having started something so amazing. That is gonna be it from me. Again, hope you enjoyed. If you wanna see more stuff like this, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, let me know your thoughts, all that good stuff. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.